Good morning, everyone. A few weeks ago, I posted a video that my income was slashed by 50%. I'm going to share with you in tangible ways what I am doing now versus what I did back then in order to save the money in order that we can survive. Welcome to Homestead Tessie. Everyone, it's really cold out here. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about my 50% less income. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit about what am I doing different? And I really wanna thank you guys so much. Well, we're gonna do some talking. Let me go ahead, I have to work. This is part of my reduced income and it's part of my life. Yes, it's very cold, but fresh air is really good for you. I don't mind it, usually, not too much, anyhow. All right, let me go and do this. I have to get this wash on the line early this morning because if I don't get it up early, it won't dry. And we got sunshine and we got wind. And that's the two things that we love the most in getting all of our wash. I'm really surprised of the amazing interest that I got in that video. All right, I gotta get working quick. It is freezing out here. Let's go in the house, okay? Okay. Oh, I can only do small amounts of laundry at one time. I think you all know that now because I don't have a big washing machine like most people do. So that means a lot of little trips, but I always get it done. Okay. Nothing like carrying the camera while you're working. Oh, woo wee. Who needs blush when you're outside? It gives you those rosy cheeks naturally. Let's get in the house. <sighs> it is cold out there. My nose looks like little Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I can take my shoes off. And I don't know where we're gonna go. I think we'll go in my pantry. And we'll do some talk on there. And about my lower income and, you know, I think I've been there and done that before. It seems like, you know, it's always feast or famine. And well, it's not quite that bad, right? Now, if you're living in the UK, I heard some really horrible stories about that. All right, I go get my laundry basket. My kitchen is a mess. I really hate doing videos when my house is a mess. I always like to have my house cleaned up first. I don't know why, I guess I feel more relaxed. But I do wanna say something before I start all this because I'm looking at it right now. I really wanna thank a beautiful person who sent me these king size sheets and their flannel sheets. That is very kind of you. Now she sent this a couple weeks ago and I really wanted to make sure I give her a proper thank you and I'm gonna wash them today and put them on our bed. So I just wanted to say that in this video just so she knows that I wanna give her a public thank you because that's so kind. And I guess it really has to do with my video today because I really wanna say thank you and I just feel like, wow, you know, there's amazing people in this world because 
the wow factor is because that you really resonated with my video and you didn't make me feel like a fool or make me feel embarrassed and you just made me feel like hey Tessie we've all been there we all understand and that's really amazing all right well let's go talk all right so you know i think i say this all the time and i try not to repeat myself through the years but i mean come on when you have so many videos you're bound to repeat yourself but i'm always amazed at videos and responses and you know sometimes i'm amazed that there's not responses and other times i'm so amazed of all the responses that i get to certain videos that i do and when I told everyone about my income, now you must understand years ago, my husband, when he had his accident and then he wasn't able to work as much, I, that was years ago and I did a full videos on that. You know, I talked about job loss and you know, you just never know what tomorrow's going to bring. You can go with good times in your life and that can go with bad times in your life. You know, you just never know when all of a sudden you may wake up and you know, things happen in your life that are just, wow, amazing. And then you may wake up and some things happen in your life and it's like, wow, why? So what am I doing and how am I going from here? I guess that's the question. Because Hubby said, you know, Tessie, you really should do a follow-up on that and just tell him now, you know, what it's like for you. And I thought, okay, well, then I will. So there are some slight differences. As you know, I was never a big spender. And as you know, I never lived a frivolous life. I mean, I, I never lived a frivolous life ever. We were in the real estate market and we were flippers. We flipped houses. You know, all that problems that we had was when the housing market crashed and we were deep in debt, but it was business debt. It wasn't like frivolous living debt, but still there was things that we should have done that we didn't do correctly. Like we went out to eat a lot and you know, we did things like that. Well, I really don't do that. Now I will have a video here and there where we go out to eat. Maybe it's for a birthday. When it was to meet my birth father, we celebrated and we went out for breakfast, you know, little things like that. I don't, we don't go out to eat. We can't afford it. I'll be straight up honest with you. I can't afford it. We can't afford going out to eat. If I was a millionaire, I would be going out to eat. I'll be honest with you. If I was a millionaire, I would go to different restaurants and sit back and relax and don't have to worry about dishes and not having running water and not having drains. I would do that, but I don't have that. And most people don't have that kind of money, especially if you have a family. I don't know how people afford it. So our daughter lives a block away from us. She doesn't go away. When she does go away, she goes with us. We save our gas by that way. She goes along with us. We do trips all at one time. We don't go away at all unless it's all in that way. The church that I love, the church that I grew up with, the church that I was born in, so to speak, is only two miles away from me. So the volunteer work that I do is only two miles away from me. Everything is close right here. And so we don't do a whole lot of going away. Now you will be seeing soon, if you didn't already, that my sister and I and our family, we went thrift shopping. That was a special, uh, that was a special occasion. You know, that's something that we probably won't do again for a long time. And that was fun and I really enjoyed it. And I had $20 that I could spend. And that $20 was the $20 that I would have spend it at, spent at the thrift store. So that was an extra money. And so all of these things I'm sharing with you in great detail. Why? There's a reason. I'm sharing with all this with all of you because finance is something taboo. A lot of people didn't want to talk about that. Now, of course, on YouTube, finances is something that those channels are built on. And it's very private. They used to say, don't talk about religion, don't talk about your age, and don't talk about money. And so those things are used to be taboo, tab taboo. <laughs> And, you know, it's just not that way anymore. And if you can see what I'm doing, maybe visually it can help you in working on your life. Everyone's different. I could do a video on something that 100 YouTube channels have done a video on. Let's say this. I could do a video on how to can this chicken pot pie 
without the noodles, of course, but I could do a video on this and you could have a hundred YouTube channels doing the same thing. But the difference is everybody's different. Everybody does things a little bit different. So I could talk about my money and I could talk about my finances and my way of saying things is going to be just a little bit different than anybody else's. Nobody lives like I do and I don't live like anybody else does. So I'm going to tell you something else. When I first started my channel, we had a wood pellet stove. We heat it with wood. Lots of times people have asked me the last two and a half, three years, where's our wood stove? I don't have it anymore. I developed a lung condition. We coughed a lot because the wood pellet stove was extremely dusty and it was extremely, had a lot of ash. You had to clean it out every other day and it was very sooty. And that caused my husband and I to have respiratory conditions. There's no reason other than that because it was a pellet stove. And for us in our small area of living, it just didn't work out for us. That may not be the case for you. And you may love to have a pellet wood pellet stove. It may be just our health or whatever, our age, what, you know, I don't know. But we heat now with electric infrared little fireplaces. And we've been doing that now for about two and a half, three years. And our electric bill will run about 200 to $300, which is high because it's electric. Um, we have to use them by electric, but we aren't having nice, toasty, warm house. You're going to be seeing me dress really warm because it's going to be, you know, we keep it at 60 and at 62 degrees. We don't keep it at 75 degrees. And at night, we don't usually have heat in our bedroom at all. And that is how we are saving our money because that is electric that we have to have. Other ways, we are cutting back. The oil lamps, a lot of people have asked me about the oil lamps. And the oil lamps do not save you money if you're buying the oil. And so I have to really clarify to you how I'm able to save money with the oil lamps and how that really helps me. The oil lamps are most beneficial if you live in a drafty house and you don't have this fumes. You don't smell the fumes if you live in a drafty house. If you're living in a brand new house or a small apartment that's very closed, you will smell some kerosene fumes. Also, it helps heat our house. So our bathroom has no heat in it. it that's how it's always been. There's no heat in our bathroom. So what we will do is around six o'clock at night, we will have an oil lamp on in the bathroom and then put the door slightly closed. And then that will actually heat up the bathroom enough. Now we don't have it overnight. We never go to bed with oil lamps on. We never leave the house with oil lamps on. The oil lamps are always lit about four to five o'clock in the afternoon. And then when we go to bed at 8 p.m., they're always extinguished. And then I will have the oil lamps on in the morning for only a couple hours till daylight. And so for me, I go about three to four gallons, four gallons is a lot, three gallons a winter time. And then as soon as it's March, we don't use the oil lamps anymore. Now for me, it saves me money because I save up points from having an Amazon storefront that when people buy things off of Amazon and use links that I provide, or they buy anything off of Amazon, but they use my link to start searching for it. That gives me a little bit of money, but that money isn't paid to me. That's given to me by a credit. And then in that credit, I, I scroll up those credits and then I'm able to get oil lamp <laughs> oil. I get the oil and that is what provides me all winter long. But the oil lamps do one thing for me that some of you can understand. When I have the oil lamps on, it gives me a sense of beautiful calmness and peace. It is an old way of living and it is a quiet and peaceful way of living. We have no animals, we have no small children, and the oil lamps just radiate a warmth that has really tremendously blessed me. And so there's the idea of the oil lamps. And that's how it saves me money. But even at $20, I think it's like $25 now a gallon. Oil lamps, I highly recommend because they're so much cheaper than other things that you could do in your life. And they just give you a piece. I'd rather 
buy oil for my oil lamp than a new pair of shoes. <laughs> That's just me. And a lot of you have tried it and you understand it. You don't know how it is. You just, it's hard to explain it if you've never experienced it for yourself. So I believe that, you know, everything happens for a reason. We can turn struggles in our life and we can turn them into being bitter or we can become better by it. And I was, God just whoosh, turned me around 360. It was like God took his hands, put them on my shoulders, spun me around and said, whoa, 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 Tessie, wait a minute, girl. Let's get back to where it all started. And I say this in great faith, and I say this in saying to all of you, that when trials and tribulations come, that doesn't mean they're gonna be there forever. And that just means for the time being, this is how your life is going to be. And for the time being, this is my life. But you know what? I had some tears, some self-pity tears, you know, like, you know, I mean, we're human. I wiped my tears. I shook myself off. And I said, you know what, Tessie? You're doing the best that you can. And if this is the direction that I need to go, this is the direction I need to go. And that is to share with you how we're gonna be saving money, how we're gonna do things. I mean, we still didn't even winterize this mobile home yet. And wait till you see what we do to winterize it because it doesn't cost money. <laughs> and, you know, but when I hear stories about people who are living in the UK right now, who have it a hundred million times worse than me, I realize that they said in Britain, there are going to be people that are going to freeze to death. There are people right now that are homeless. There are people right now that live in their vehicles. There are people right now who don't have food. And so I realized that I continue to share my life, but I also want to share something with all of you before I leave. This is extremely important for me to share with you. I'm sitting in a pantry that's overflowing with a bounty of blessings, but this overfilling of bounty of blessings did not just arrive here. When things were prosperous in my life, I was doing all of this. Some of this I did with, when I didn't even have any air conditioning. I cried, I was so hot. I only had air conditioning this year or last year. So, you know, some of this is stored two years. I look at it now and I could cry. Because I worked hard because I had the foresight of knowing that someday I may need it or someone I know may needs it. So the moral of this story is glean what you can, store up what you can. For years, I was called a hoarder. <laughs> oh, there's that homestead Tessie. She's a hoarder. <laughs> and for years, I thought, God, why am I doing this when the world is doing amazing? It's never too late, my friends. You're never too old, never too late to learn something new. I'm telling you that what I do, 90% of what I do, most of you can do. It just takes a little bit of applying it into your life and taking a little bit and thinking, how can you put this into your life? It's practicality, my friends, practicality. You go to the food bank, you go to the food pantry and they say, we have so much of this. Would you like to have this? And you think to yourself, well, I don't know what to do with that. I would like that, but I don't know how to store it long term. I don't know what to do. Take it home and research what to do with it. You'll be surprised what you can do with it. You know, all of the fresh food that you see, there's ways 
that you can save it for the months to come. Seriously, there is. When you go to a grocery store and they seem to have this huge sale on strange looking stuff like uh, cornmeal. What are you going to do with cornmeal? But it's a huge sale on it. Take it home. Oh, I see. I can make crackers with the cornmeal. I can make chicken coating with the cornmeal. I can use the cornmeal to make cornbread. Oh, I can add cornmeal to make muffins. I can add cornmeal to a lot of things. And then you'll realize, wait a minute. Yeah, there's a lot of ways I can use this food. Learn it, research it, educate yourself. And before you know it, you'll have a pantry like me. <sighs> Take care, everyone. I will see you guys again tomorrow.